This is the 17th video in our series looking at how to complete a basic setup and configuration of a Synology network attached storage device, or as they're more commonly referred to, a NAS. When we first set up and configured our Synology NAS, we only fitted the NAS with a 2TB hard drive. However, having now created our network shares, and with plans to use our NAS as a media server, we are starting to realize that a 2TB hard drive is not enough capacity for our needs. So in preparation for adding additional storage capacity to our Synology NAS, in this video we'll be reviewing a utility that is part of the DSM called Storage Manager. Let's first log back into this station manager using our administrator's credentials. Now from the desktop of the DSM, if we select Main Menu, from within Main Menu we will find the utility Storage Manager. When we select this option, Storage Manager will open and we're shown an overview of the volumes on our NAS. On the right side of the Storage Manager window, we have the main panel, which contains relevant information relating to a specific option. To the left side of our window, we have a sidebar which consists of the following options Overview, Volume, Storage Pool, HDD SSD, and Hot Spare. Overview provides us with a quick way to check the health of the storage on our NAS. We can also see the status of any volumes that have been created along with information about all of the storage pools that make up the volumes of our NAS. This includes information such as the storage pool ID, the type of RAID being used, and the actual capacity of each individual storage pool. Disk information shows us the number of hard drives that we've installed in our NAS. This is along with information relating to the number of available drive base slots that we can fit additional hard drives to. At the bottom of this panel, we have a simple graphic which will show us which drive bays are being used. As you can see here, we currently only have a single hard drive fitted to the first drive bay slot of our NAS. On a Synology NAS, a volume is where we store our data, for example, documents, shared folders and packages. However, a volume can be made up of more than one hard drive, which allows us to create volumes that exceed the maximum storage capacity of any one single drive. The volume panel simply presents us with information about any volumes that we've created on our NAS. As you can see, we have a button to create a new volume, but as we have not yet fitted our NAS with any additional hard drives, this option is greyed out. Next, we have an option to remove a volume. This will start a wizard to help us with the removal of any volumes on our NAS. But as volume 1 is the only volume currently installed on our NAS, we will simply select Cancel. Finally, we have Action, which provides us with two options. One is to perform a system defragmentation, and the other allows us to configure the volume which we currently have highlighted. Within Configure, we have two tabs, General and SSD Trim. Under the General tab, we have some basic information relating to Volume 1. For example, we have the name of Volume 1 storage pool, a description field to help us mark up and identify a specific volume, and an option called Record File Access Time Frequency. This option relates to how often the last action of a file is recorded. So by adjusting this setting, we can improve the performance of something called snapshot replication. Snapshot replication is used to protect data from deletion, data corruption, viruses and application crashes. However, as our home network will only be catering for a small number of users, tweaking this setting will probably not improve the performance of our NAS. So we will leave this setting on its default. The option SSD Trim is a feature specifically designed for solid state drives. While solid state drives are very quick at reading data, because of the way that SSD technology works, 
it can actually be slower to write data to an SSD than it is to write data to a hard disk drive. So by enabling SSD trim, our NAS can improve the performance of any SSDs that we've installed into our NAS. Let's return to the general tab and change the description field for this volume. By changing the description field, if in the future we have to work with a specific volume, we should be better able to identify that volume, thus minimizing mistakes. As more than one hard drive can be used to create a volume, the next option is Storage Pool. This shows us the hard drives that we have currently installed on our NAS and how they've been grouped together to create storage pools. You can see that within the Storage Pool panel, we have three tabs. Storage Pool, Data Scrubbing, and configurations. Under the storage pool tab, we can see any storage pools that have been created. At the moment, we only have one hard drive installed on our NAS, so we only have a single volume with the volume consisting of a storage pool that contains just our two terabyte hard drive. You can see that we have a button to create a new storage pool, but as we have not yet installed any additional hard drives to this NAS, this option is greyed out. Remove, as the name suggests, will remove a storage pool from our NAS. While Action provides us with five options that are fairly self-explanatory. Repair. Add disk. Change RAID type. Convert a single volume storage pool to a multiple volume storage pool. And change settings. If we select change settings, you can see that we have options that allow us to change Stripe cache size, and these options relate to something called RAID. RAID stands for Redundant Array of Independent Disks, and is a way to store the same data in different places on multiple hard drives to protect that data in the event of a drive failure. Synology actually recommend that as home users unfamiliar with using and managing RAID, that we use SHR or Synology Hybrid RAID, as it's easier to set up, use and maintain. However, while we are using SHR, because we currently only have one hard drive installed in our NAS, the options in Stripe cache size are greyed out, so let's select Cancel. Synology describes data scrubbing as a data maintenance feature used to inspect storage pools. However, as data scrubbing is not supported on all models of Synology NAS, if your NAS supports data scrubbing, you can find additional information about this topic on the Synology website. Within data scrubbing, you can schedule when scrubbing will occur. The action button within data scrubbing allows us to manually run, pause, or cancel a data scrub. The next tab, Configurations, allows us to control how quickly data is synchronized between hard drives that are part of a RAID. As we mentioned earlier, RAID is a method for protecting data stored over multiple drives, as it will protect our data in the event of a drive failure. However, in order for the data to remain protected, copies of that data must be synced. Unfortunately, keeping that data synchronized will affect the performance of our NAS, so RAID resync speeds allows us to control the impact that resyncing has on our NAS. As home users, we won't be expert in the configuration and implementation of RAID, so we will leave this option set to lower the impact on overall system performance recommended. HDD SSD or Hard Disk Drive Solid State Drive provides information on the specific types of storage added to our NAS. Within the panel we have four tabs. HDD SSD, Logs, Test Scheduler, and General. Under the HDD SSD tab, if we highlight a specific drive and select Health Info, we can see some basic information about that drive. This includes the health status summary and the drive's basic statistics. SMART, or Self-Monitoring Analysis and Reporting Technology, monitors our hard drives to ensure that they continue to work reliably. The SMART test will check for mechanical and electrical issues that could be an indicator that a hard drive might be failing. 
In order to run a test on a hard drive, we simply need to select Start. A summary of the last tests are shown here. SmartInfo can be used to monitor for specific issues related to a hard drive in our NAS, while History allows us to view the results of any smart test that we've conducted on a hard drive. Action provides us with a drop-down menu that allows us to securely erase or deactivate a drive. We also have an option called Switch Drive Indicator Status to show us a warning light to help us identify a particular drive bay. If we set the time to 1 minute and then select Switch, the indicator light on the front of our NAS will change colour from green to amber. We can use this feature to make it easier for us to identify which drive on our NAS needs to be swapped out. Finally, within Action we have Configure, where you will find a single option called Enable Write Cache. However, as you can see here, the hard drive we have installed into our NAS does not support this option, so we will select Cancel. Logs is fairly self-explanatory. While Test Scheduler will by default have two schedules that will automatically run smart tests on any drives in our NAS. Finally, General will allow us to change a number of settings. If we have enabled notifications, our NAS will be able to send via email a monthly disk health report. We will be looking at notifications in a future video. A bad sector is an inaccessible or unwritable part of a drive due to some sort of permanent damage. While our NAS can mark that area on the drive as a bad sector, if the number of sectors consistently increase, that is usually an indication of a failing hard drive. Bad sector warning will monitor the number of bad sectors on a hard drive. When that number has been exceeded, the status of the hard drive will change from healthy to warning. While a solid state drive does not have any physical moving parts that will wear out over time, they do slowly become less reliable as you rewrite data to them. If we enable disk lifespan warning, our NAS will notify us when a solid state drive is coming to the end of its life and will need to be replaced. The Smart Database relates to ensuring that your NAS is using the correct information to monitor the performance of the drives installed in your NAS. There should be no need to manually update the database as it will periodically and automatically update itself. For example, the database should automatically update if you add a new drive to your NAS. Hot Spare is the NAS equivalent to a car spare tyre in that if a drive in a storage pool starts to fail, a reserve drive can be used to protect the data in that storage pool. As home users, while it would be nice to have a hot spare, the actual cost for leaving a hard drive in reserve may not warrant the protection that it provides. So to recap, in this video, we reviewed Storage Manager and in the process attempted to identify its core features while providing a broad summary of some of the terminology that this utility uses. In the next video in this series, we will take a look at how we can use Storage Manager to expand the storage capacity of our Synology NAS.